We began yesterday and we learned the first day of creation. Chapter 1, verse 6, the uh, second day of creation. By Yomer Elohim, and God said, Yehid let there be a firmament, a heaven, a firmament, Besei Chamoyim, within the water. So we learned earlier that the, there was a mishmash, there was confusion, there was water all over the place. Let there be what is called a heaven within the water. We learned that there was water under the earth and there's water all over. The heaven will separate, be imabdu, let the firmament, the heaven, bring about a separation, bein mayim, lomoyim, between one water and the other water. So that now you have water above the clouds, heavenly water, and then you have water beneath the ground, subterranean water, underground water, and in between the underground water and the heavenly water, you've got uh, a planet, you've got earth, you can function. We talked yesterday that the six days of creation correspond to the six attributes of Chesed, Gvura, Tiferes, Netzach, Od, Yesod. And the seventh day Shabbos corresponds to Malchus. So this is the idea of separation, of contraction, of filtering, of detail. That's the second attribute of Gvura. Yehi rakia, yechazak horakia, let the firmament be solid. And here Rashi comes to tell us a theory which Rashi repeats again and again, coming from the oral law. And that is that on the first day, which again in Kabbalah, is chesed, is kindness, is flow, God created everything. All the raw substance of creation was there. And then in the, substa- in, in, in the following days, beginning with the second day, God broke it down into the appropriate application and detail. Even though the heavens were already created on the, in day one, but it wasn't working very well. It wasn't functional. There's an adorable story I like to tell. That uh, there was a, uh, a fellow from Southern California where usually the weather is nice and warm who came to Crown Heights. It was a cold December day. And he had not uh, been accustomed to this winter uh, East Coast weather. And even though the sun is shining, it's beautiful, but it's freezing. And he says, I don't understand this. Don't you guys have the same sun we have? What's going on here? Why is it so cold? He says, yes, we have the exact same sun that you have, but here it don't work. So, you know, you have to have the heavens, and then it has to work. So the first day, the raw heavens were created. The second day, they worked. The Korshu Basheni, they became solid the second day. Migadas HaKadosh Baruch because God shouted His command. Ba'omri, when He said, Yehid Akiya, let there be a firmament. Zeo Shekosim, this is what it says in the book of Job, where He recalls and reminisces, and He says, Amude Shomayim Yerefofu. The pillars of heaven shook. In other words, they were not firmly fixed, Kol Yehim Rishon, the first day, of Asheni and the second day, Yismuhu Migad they were shocked, shock therapy, from God's rebuke, his shout, Ka'odam Shemishtemim Ve'emid, like a man who goes into shock and stands still, Migad Asa Ma'ayin Olov, from the shout of someone who's yelling, the heavens, they began to work. They began to function. In the very center of the waters, sheyesh hefrish, because there is a difference or a distance or an equal distance between the upper waters and the firmament. It's between the heaven and the water which is on the earth. So again, you have the separation of the heavenly waters and the subterranean earth waters. 
How does all this work? It works because that is how God commanded creation to function. So it's God's command that makes it work. After that, it becomes a scientific axiom. It becomes a scientific fact. We see it's a fact. We've experimented. Why is that? Because that's what Hashem commanded. The sun rises and sets every day, and we don't make a big deal of it. In fact, we predict it. Oh, today it's going to be whatever it is. 651. How do you know? Because I'm smart. How do you know? Because it's fixed. Who fixed it? Oh, it's... So that's Hashem's command. Verse 7. So Hashem made the heaven. First he said, let heaven be. And then he made the heaven. And he divided between the waters which were under the firmament to and the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. He said it in its proper position. That's what it means to make it. It doesn't mean he made it. But through the speech, he said it. He said it. She shall set right her fingernails. Meaning, she does it. It doesn't say above, but it says from above. Because the waters are suspended in the air and space. Basically, uh, when you think about how rain clouds uh, function, and the rain is stored up uh, in, in the cloud, the, the, the water ascends and then the it evaporates and then it gets stored in the cloud and then it comes down and, and before it comes down, where is it? It's in the cloud. Well, that's interesting. Is, is the cloud waterproof? Now the big question is, every day of creation, it says, and God saw it was good. Yesterday we learned and God saw it was good. Why didn't God see it was good on Monday? Because the task of setting the water in place was not done until the third day. And he began the second day. Something that's incomplete, you can't say it's full and good. There's a Yiddish expression. You don't show a fool an incomplete task. A wise man can see a building in construction and say, oh, I see what this is going to look like when it's done. It's beautiful. But a fool comes and sees a building in construction. He says, it's a stupid building. There are no walls. <laughs> you don't have any light switches. You know, fool, it's not finished yet. Monday, it was work in progress. And the third day, Tuesday, Shenigma Melechus Hamayim, when the work of the water was complete, and he began, and he completed, yet another labor, there's twice kitov, twice, one for the completion of the work of Monday, and the other for the completion of the work of Tuesday. That's in the simple sense, as Rashi brings it down. Of course, we look into the teachings of Kabbalah and Hasidus. We see that Monday is Gvura, Monday is severity, and severity in and of itself is problematic because severity is not only a good thing which brings about the detail of the first day, but severity also says no. Chesed says yes, Gura says no. It's only Tiferes, which is the combination of Chesed and Gura, the bottom of the triangle, that brings out the good in Gvura. It's the third day, compassion, which shows how important severity is, that you need a triangle of kindness, severity, and compassion to bring out beauty, because without the severity, without the detail, you have nothing. But we don't really appreciate that until we have the third day, like we don't appreciate Abraham, our patriarch Abraham, fully. And to prove it, it's because he produces, in addition to a Yitzchak, a Yishmoel. From too much kindness comes Yishmoel. We don't appreciate our patriarch Yitzchak fully. And to prove it, he produced, in addition to Yaakov, an Esau. 
Yaakov, however, is the third, the bottom of the triangle, containing within him the combination of Avraham and Yitzchak. Yaakov was able to establish B'nai Yisrael, the children of Israel. That's the perfection of the third part of the triangle. Therefore, in simple terms, it is only on the third day that we appreciate the blessing of the second day, and that's why the good of the second day is mentioned on the third day. As an uh, outgrowth of that, there's an old tradition within Jewish teachings that the third day of the week is an especially mazel dika week. It's a special uh, blessing. It's a day of special blessing, and people want to schedule something which is a cornerstone uh, event in their lives, they should perhaps consider scheduling it on a Tuesday, Yom Shlishi Shehuchpal Bo Kitov, the third day in which the word, and it was good, is mentioned not once, but twice. So we'll stop over here at the end of the uh, second day.